I just wanted to show you a couple of things about uh, Wars of Succession, this new game by Matrix, uh, produced or developed by the company uh, Agiod or Agiod, I don't know how to pronounce that, it's a French company, and uh, in pro uh, produced in conjunction with El Gran Capitan, which is a s historical society of some kind that they are very knowledgeable in history, and uh, they produce this great game, and uh, there are a couple of things that I wanted to comment about, and I will explain that later. So this is a small scenario. It is an, uh, a scenario at the very early stage of the Wars of Succession, the Spanish uh, Succession, and uh, we have here the scenario designer has carved up uh, a portion of Austria and the northern Italy, uh, Switzerland, and modern day in France, I believe. Um, I don't know. So it's um, quite a limited region to fight and uh, to get. It's a perfectly good scenario if you're new or just can't remember uh, how to play with this engine. As I mentioned before, this is a game uh, heavily based in history, and um, you know we are at the point of history where there is a lot of, you know, uh, different parts of 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 the kingdoms that were divided and governed by different people. It's like, like the Treaty of Westphalia never happened. You have so many rulers and people interested in this and that. Uh, besides, you know, the big thing that is that the Bourbons or the Bourbones are going to uh, be. Uh, uh, claiming or you know seizing power in France and Spain at the same time and that idea was not very welcome by either uh, you know England or Austria so uh, this is what this is war about and uh, well for the non initiated in his initiated in history uh, this may become a challenge here like you know I'm watching at this map over here which is very very nice as you can see, this uh, war game doesn't suffer for a lack of uh, beautiful maps and very appealing uh, artistic uh, stuff. But uh, you go there and you see your, you know, some stacks that you know they are yours because you click on them and you see that um, the units are are revealed to you. But uh, where's the enemy? Should that fight? It's a kind of a, a very fine. Uh, line over there and um, well what I do which is a kind of what is prescribed in the manual which of course I recommend to read it it is to use these overlays over there where you will see the ownership of different regions and again if you're not uh, you know very historically oriented or aware of the history of this conflict you will find all these type of colors we need what well, these are different uh, uh, duchies uh, of, that were, you know, belonging to the, uh, different uh, people. And um, the best thing that you can do, it is to show allegiance, allegiances. And you see this big swat of um, uh, blue over there. Actually, there are people, it inhabits people that are actually very fond of you and they pledge your allegiance to your cause other regions well they have different types of alleg allegiances and in particular this one is very interesting the republic of venice which uh was kind of uh as you will see later in this uh, scenario it was kind of uh uh its uh neutrality was violated by uh uh eugene of savoy over there and the auspices of the um, of the uh, Austrian king. So, funny story there. Now, <laughs> what I do, and you're not going to believe this, and uh, call me crazy or anything like that, what I find very, very useful, it is to use supply. Supply there, in green, shows places where your supply can flow, supplies can flow uh, with no problem, and uh, usually a good show of regions that you have a control on or regions that you can control or you know that they are within your allegiance so pardon my lack of planning or whatever but this is sometimes what I do so let's go to the second comment for this game 
there are no tutorials there are a couple of uh, video of videos in YouTube uh, produced it and narrated by our <laughs> a fellow developer uh, Philippe from AGO I believe it's him I recognize his voice over there and uh, uh, they are well produced uh, they are very nice very simple to follow and they will help a lot for a new player uh, there used to be you know more complete uh, type of tutorials more intense and, and whatnot there is also a manual but uh, if you're new to this well you are in for a very steep learning curve let me tell you and also the history of the conflict is kind of a, a you know someone plays against you if you are absolutely new to this so uh, that's uh, my second comment so third comment as you know uh, the AGO engine relies a lot in uh, command and control uh, by this time you know the army organizations were uh, particularly a bit uh, different compared to nowadays and uh, I haven't explored the game enough to see if there is a type of corpse or anything like that but at least you can group your forces when an, an apt leader uh, is available you can combine the forces of the different regiments that you see in the bottom over there under the command of a single marshal or general and um, you will be able to uh, get them under command troops without any commander they're bound to disaster just remember that and uh, which commander you choose is also very 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 important for instance this guy over here Vigeroy, uh he turns out to be a professional pessimist look at that are you reading that this commander is absolutely not charismatic for his men. oh he's a defeatist defeatist minus five maximum cohesion <laughs> oh my god what a downer not a not a fun guy to be around let me tell you but anyway this is what we have we don't have very good generals uh we we'll have to take it from there and uh, but keep in mind that you know sometimes when you have a star general that is able to uh, move armies faster or plan combat better you hold tight into him because he's gonna help you to win the campaigns and whatnot so as of right now what I have it is that all my forces in northern Italy they are uh, kind of locked you see this uh, red band and a lock over there meaning that they can do anything for the time being so I'm just gonna press the next turn button when you press that a scale from 0 to 30 appears that represents times it goes back and forth a couple of times that's confusing as hell to me um, and then it goes from 0 and you see Eugene invading and presenting battle at Cremona over there. He has 35k men, we have 18k men, and uh, we lost this battle. Not for much, well, yeah, in infantry we lost a double, but um, it was not a, a, com a complete, you know, walkover. The, the troops actually hold over into it and uh, now we have this type of situation what I was mentioning is uh, that thing of the of the clock going uh, back and forth a couple of times it was always there since the inception of this I do believe that the, the engine first calculates uh, events or triggers or whatever or supply I don't know and then it for the last round goes actually for what happens timely in in, in time and uh, just to give you a, a brief reminder this is a we go type of uh, game which means that it's turn based but everything goes into simultaneous resolution and the beauty is supposed to be on how the armies do move and they collide or they retreat and blah 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 so this seamless action where you would see these stacks here moving in and out of a province or getting engaged into combat should be a bit better and it's a pity because a while back uh, a few years back the Agiot or Agiot engine had a thing that allowed you to you know to run the turn and then rewind and see what happened and you would you know go and in particular you could focus into a determined region and see what army what enemy army came into that region what did they do they pillage it or they do whatever they enter a structure 
or a fort or whatever. That was one of the fondest memories that I do have with this engine and it's not there anymore and I don't know why. And uh, it becomes a problem for bigger campaigns where you have a bigger theater of operation and uh, well, you know, this is the whole Europe basically uh, uh, waging war and uh, you are taking from here to there to show you that this army moved here and there and it's very difficult to you know keep up with that so that rewind button oh gosh I really miss it very 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 much but well enough whining we have a uh, catinat here and we're going to move uh, Villeroy and uh, we have a reserve company here that we don't know the strength uh, if we click on it, nothing happens. We can make sure of what's going on over there. So, uh, I don't know if this is a bug or what, but do you remember the pessimist here? <laughs> He's not able to change the posture of his forces from uh, purely uh, defensive posture into a more aggressive one. I don't know if it is a bug or if it is actually something designed for, but hell, if it is, kudos for that. The guy cannot fight his way out of a paper bag. Anyway, pity. Uh, I wonder what happens if I take him out of command. And maybe the, a good thing to do. So let's take him out. Let's see what happens. So to do that, you will have to take the character or the icon from it and move it out so you're left with uh, the army of the army of Lombardy and uh, it's very important now that we see how many command spawn do we have this guy Oh my god, this is gonna be tough. This guy, the forces under him require a command of 18 and uh, he can only provide 8 or 6. So anything that we do has a 35% penalty. And uh, you can imagine that, you know, movement is gonna be uh, hampered too. I don't know about that, but uh, I just don't want to see. And uh, well, is it really worth to have this guy over here or shall we go with Bill Roy keeping his job and attack Eugene or just, you know, be present over there? Hmm, decisions, decisions. So Catinat over here has no special abilities. He's not of one of our brightest generals, but at least he can assume a, an offensive posture, but he has suffered many many losses I don't know what's going on with him but um, he's not in the best of the positions to right now embark into any type of offensive so we're gonna tell him to move into inside Mantua right away which is our uh, best city over there so uh, this is something that I was thinking to do which is uh, maybe you can take Aguilar and uh, combine the uh, army of Lombardy with the French corps. Ha! Huh, look at that. So right now I can change. Let's see the um, command value. Still we are under 35% penalty my generals do suck dude so anyway uh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna put billy roy back this is definitely it's not gonna work i prefer to have somebody that provides some some sort of command structure into it and yeah they are right now required command is 39 you see it on top over there i cannot point at you and i provide the command is 62 so off we go to see what happens with Eugene in uh, near Mantua. So we're going to move him. It's going to take him 32 days to this French army to get there. See to the next turn right now. Uh, clock back and down. 
here starts the fun. Billy Royce on the move. Kind of arriving. Oh, he didn't arrive. I hate when the engine does that. He goes, but he doesn't go. It's like a sort of quantum mechanics type of thing. Like he's there, but he's not there. So anyway, we are in a strain here with Billy Roy. And uh, Catinat here, unfortunately, hasn't moved into this uh, town. But I hope he's going to be okay. He still has, as you can see here in the uh, top, uh, in the uh, bottom right corner, you can see that he has all his supplies and whatnot. So uh, let's keep this guy moving. It's going to take him four days and see what happens. We cannot change his uh, attack posture because again the guy just cannot make up his mind to attack anybody. Give me So there we go. We fall anxiety, we're day zero, Billy Roy moves in. And look at the number, the combat power of Billy Roy going down. Kind of weird. So there were no attacks, and uh, there is nothing that I can do. Probably what it can be done, it is just to divide the armies. It's gonna be a very, very. Oh, there is a battle! There is a battle! Villeroy! He's taking a beating. Eugene. Till oh, we got the victory. Let's see those losses. Losses are quite uneven. I don't know how we even won that one. We lost eight thousand men. He lost three thousand. But you know, if you count it as a victory, I will take it as it is. So this is our first victory over there, and look at that. Eugene is moving up, going back to Trento. Wow, that's a nice thing, guys. Woohoo! I wasn't expecting that, but um, yeah, you know, not bad. It is October, the winter is about to settle in, and uh, well, I'm gonna take that victory and uh, wait for the next round. We have no offensive capability. Uh, we cannot pursue him all the way up to the north, back into Austria, or the Austrian territory. And uh, we cannot even, uh, yeah, we can actually invade, uh, pass through Venice if we decide to do so. But anyway, that was a nice uh, turn of events and uh, I'm going to save this thing right now and resume it and uh, report back to you how this thing follows so thank you for thank you very much for watching and i hope i didn't uh, bore you too much and i uh, will continue to keep an eye on this game